Yesterday I was able to drag the Land Cruiser into the shop and get it up on the lift. And you know the old saying, curiosity killed the cat. I think I'm as curious as anyone to try to figure out what is the cause behind that loud engine knock. If you've been following the series, you know it's turned into a mystery. You can see here we've pulled that small metal section of the subpan, but there's no access. You can't even see up in there. I certainly can't get up in there and you know see if there's loose rods or pistons that are bad or scored cylinder walls. There's no way to know. So I'm going to have Jerson pull that pan off. We're going to have to lift the engine up a little bit to get it off. But then we'll have full access to the crankshaft, all the bearings. We can see up into the cylinder walls. We can inspect the gears for the oil pump drive and so on. So we're down to about three potential causes of this noise. A number of experts on Toyotas have chimed in. It's going to be kind of fun to see what it actually turns out to be. These are from people who have been around these cars, have worked on them, and have some experience with the Land Cruiser engines. One fellow wrote from Colorado, and this is what he said. After polling the experts out here in Colorado, forums, all specialty cruiser shops, and off-web Land Cruiser experts, they have all said, broken oil pump, power steering pump, gear, Woodruff key. So this fella apparently did his own research out in Colorado where they obviously drive a lot of Land Cruisers and everybody out there is saying, okay, it's something to do with that oil pump drive gear, or the Woodruff key that's making that knocking noise. Someone else said from Bulgaria, who's had some experience with these engines, is it looks like some of the oil channels may have become polluted and blocked, causing damage to the lower portion of the cylinder. If I can translate it a bit, he was trying to tell me how to translate this from his language. So he kind of feels it's a piston, maybe excessive wear, sl piston slap on the cylinder. And we've discussed that before, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly a possibility. And then I've got a really interesting comment from someone in Tanzania who says, my dad is a very good mechanic and an expert on these Land Cruisers. He has his own workshop here and he's worked on a number of these engines and he's suggesting that the noise is between the piston and the valve possibly hitting each other. Now that kind of makes sense to me because we get that kind of weird, uh, you know, clang, 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 and then this ting, ting, ting noise. So, you know, that might mean maybe it's just touching, just touching the valve enough to not bend it because you know we've got good compression on all six cylinders, but maybe that piston is just hitting enough to give it that loud knock and then every once in a while it varies. And of course we think it's up in upper part of the engine as we've listened and checked things over, but <laughs> Jerson and I still don't know what's causing the knock. This piston either hitting the head or the valve is certainly an interesting comment. And I'd probably have to pull the cylinder head to really determine that. He suggested I pull the cylinder head. At this point, I want to find out what is causing the knock. And I don't want to have to tear the whole engine apart. Okay, that's what I'm working on right now. And this whole idea of blocked oil passages causing uh, loss of oil flow to something, some part, you know, inside the engine is, of course, uh, really intriguing to me as well. And at this point in the video, I'm going to pull that pan out and we're going to look at it again and discuss a little bit more about this issue with silicone sealant. I'm very aware that Toyota uses an RTV silicone sealant on their pans at the factory. I had two or three people tell me, Kent, this is factory. This is the factory stuff. And they put it on so thick that it's just falling off into the pan in chunks. <laughs> Look at this over here. Boy, I tell you, if that's factory, then, uh, you know, uh, what, what can I say? Jerson didn't wait very long. He had that pan off in one day and emailed me some pictures. And I go, okay, there's the problem. Now, I was really hoping that it would be something I could fix. Wouldn't that be great to pull the pan off, find a problem, fix it, put the pan back on, and done. <laughs> Getting the pan off wasn't too bad. You know, we did have to raise that front of the engine a couple inches, uh, loosen the mounts up. There was quite a bit of stuff that had to come off the front end here, but this wasn't too bad. You know, there are some engines out there you have to remove the engine from the car to get the pan off, so that was a plus. And Jerson said he immediately checked all around in here. He checked the windage tray to make sure that wasn't loose and rattling. He checked the oil pump pickup tube, make sure that was tight. There's no evidence of anything hitting in here. 
you would see it by seeing bright metal marks, but when I got here, I took a look at this, confirmed that, and I also looked at the oil pickup screen, and this, you know, was a concern because you can see there's quite a bit of metal particles that are in the screen, and if you look down inside, you can see some of those metal particles have gone by the screen. And then he said he got up in there and started uh, grabbing a hold of connecting rods, and that's when he quickly found the problem. With the pan removed, you can certainly see clearly now, kind of reminded me of that song, but just relayed to me, once that pan dropped down, he immediately went to the front of the crank and checked out those gears. Look at them. They look just fine. And then he started looking around for any evidence of loose connecting rod bolts or anything else that might be hitting anywhere else in the lower part of the engine. And he just went right down the engine, number one, two, three, four, checking for tightness of the connecting rods. And then he got to number six and he said, whoops. He took a hold of the rod cap and moved it. And sure enough, it was moving excessively. And when he pulled it off, this is what he found. Look at that. Look at how thin that is. So this had been working for a while. It wasn't something that happened all of a sudden. I think the excessive noise was caused quite quickly because the bearing finally got to a point where it had worn and was just knocking really hard. But that's where all the metal came from. So we know what is causing the knock. But the mystery is not over yet. I knew you'd want to see these bearings up close. Just look at the amount of damage and wear. That's probably worn about 50% from its original thickness, both the upper and lower bearing. And the cap itself has worn. You can see here where it's scored. You can feel the scratches and it looks like it's even embedded some metal in there from the metal flaking off the bearings themselves. And if you look up at the crank journal, look at this, it's badly scored. So I thought, okay, let's go ahead and remove another bearing and see how that looks. So we took number three connecting rod cap and pulled it off. And now you can see that one. Of course, the cap is in a lot better condition. You can see the surface here isn't scored at all. But look at the bearing. This is real interesting. If you look closely, the bearing's not badly worn, but it has small pieces of metal from the other bearing that have embedded themselves in the surface of this bearing. Mystery solved, right? I think we can wrap this video up and call it good. We've solved the problem of the Toyota Land Cruiser engine knock. And I know some of you are going, hey, just a minute, Kent. I got some questions here. <laughs> well, why did that happen in the first place? Did somebody not change the oil? Did the engine overheat? What, what, what caused that bearing to wear out like that? And then what about all this issue with the noises coming from different places? You know, like, oh, wow. You know, Jerson and I were focusing on number four, number five, and look, it was number six. So we learned something there that sound can reverberate and transfer through an engine and can fool you. And I'm not so sure that the rod bearing is the only noise. Follow me here. Maybe the reason that the noise occurred all of a sudden was the bearing finally wore enough that the piston was hitting either the head or the, one of the valves. So you see, <laughs> you, you follow what I'm saying there? Because that rod bearing just didn't wear out, you know, in a couple hours. So we may have a couple of issues going on here. And of course, I'm not going to know that. You won't know that for sure unless we pull the engine, pull the head off and do some exploratory surgery. And I don't know if we'll ever find out uh, the real cause of why that rod bearing failed. But I sure like to know. <laughs> but I'm sorry, I just don't have the time to continue with forensic science here, what am I going to do with this car? I don't know. I mean, you got a lot of options. You could do a transplant. You could put a newer engine. You could, you know, get a, a rebuilt short block. You could get a crate engine. You could get a used engine out of a good running car. So I don't know. <laughs>